first off, the that really elaborate sequence with you and Olga, it, it was fun to watch as a cinephile, but how difficult was it to actually chore choreograph and just go through that entire sequence? Because that's a very ambitiously shot moment in the film. It was, you know, I, it's, we had an amazing choreographer. He was so patient and lovely. And the two stunt, stunt women were also fabulous. So, you know, we didn't have much time because it's a small independent movie um, to learn all of it. We just came in on our days off or when we were not shooting. And, you know, I think we, I worked on that for a couple days before at least, and did it a hundred times, like each little section, you know, you do she pulls your arm, you go back, she jumps over, then you duck her, you know, you do that, that 10 times, then you do the next section 10 times. But I'd never done anything like that before. So I just thought it was, I'm really thankful that I had such a wonderful choreographer who was so patient and lovely. And all, Olga's done this a million times, so she didn't, she wasn't worried about it, you know. <laughs> but I was glad that I got to work with somebody so talented. Speaking of talent, what's it like just bantering back and forth with Chris, who just comes from so many kind of different disciplines and you guys have that really oh, unique family. Yeah. My only complaint with the movie is I wanted another movie with your family. Just to talk That's about. exactly what I said. And, you know, when Chris and I both read the script, we were like, this is like a dream that you read a million scripts and you, there's a character that you love and you're like, oh, that, that would be so much fun to play. But usually it's not you. You know what I mean? And so when I read this script, I wasn't expecting, I didn't know what to expect. They were just like, hey, read the script. You, you know, you look at the character of Mimi. But I didn't, I didn't think that it was going to be some quirky, weird family that was hilarious and over the top in set in this action thriller you know it was almost like a separate movie in that movie and and when I met Chris he was like yeah I felt the same way like I felt like their scenes were the best part of the movie and so because it just set it apart it made it not like every other action movie and when he, I found out that he was playing Tom I was like oh amazing because you want somebody that's talented that can banter and they de they definitely did keep a lot of the stuff that we wrote ourselves and came up with in the movie and he's just so talented he can do like any impression any accent any anything you know so it was so much fun working with him what was the greatest part of working with this ensemble it's a very interesting movie you it, it fulfills the action level and it fulfills everything on a comedic level I really had a good time watching this what did you what attracted you you to this overall big picture for this film again what you said it, it was like it's both funny and thrilling so I didn't expect Mimi I laughed out loud with Mimi and Tom multiple times and I thought oh this isn't it's almost like like a movie set in a movie. That's why I was hoping I'm like, we need to do a spinoff with this family. Like, who are these people? How did they survive? What's their marriage like? What are their kids going to do? You know, what's a home? What's a what's a day in the life of their house? But I, yeah, I don't I don't read that many scripts like that. You know what I mean? Either it's usually just like an action thriller or a horror or a comedy. And this was like refreshing for sure. On that refreshing element, my podcast co-host, co coincidentally, he just got back a week ago, actually several days ago, from Iceland. Overall, what was your, what did you, a couple of years later, what did you take from that experience and what would you go back? From Iceland? Yeah. In general, oh, what did you love? That was just amazing. Um, there's a beach. I mean, there's so much to see, but there's a beach called Diamond Beach that was absolutely stunning. Um, basically pieces of glacier uh, break off in the night. They melt during the day, but in the, in the evening time and the morning, pieces of the glacier brought wash up to shore on black sand so it looks like big huge white like diamonds on the the black sand beach um obviously trying to see the northern lights i didn't see them but i saw so much other stuff and you get like hazy bits of it we landed in the like ice caves that those were phenomenal god there's so there's so much i i would go back honestly i would be curious to go back during the summer when it's all really green um, but I thought it was an absolutely amazing place to be, even just the people, you know, it's just, it's so tiny. They all have the same sensibility. They're so warm. They're, they're so small that this is not part of our movie at all, but on a dating app, they have to like, make sure they're not related. <laughs> That's <amazing>. Yeah. <laughs> That's how small the island is. <laughs> I've always wondered with, you've had such a diverse acting career and from when, from once you started. Do you have different priorities now? Do you look at your career in a different fashion, the way you approach it as an actor? Or is there a through line that no matter how life changes, 
there is just that one singular goal and it th- doesn't change? Oh man, that's a good question. Um, I think my goal before was it's it's definitely morphed over the years from when I was 20 to 25 to 30 to 35 for sure it's had I've had different goals and now at 35 I think well I'm 37 but at 35 in that little area of time now that I'm a mom I just think if it's a it has to be something that will make me grow as an actor or explore a different part of my psyche or self or body um and it can't and if it takes me away from my kid it has to either be something that will expand me or you know bring something more to our life as a family you know if i i was on a show in nashville i absolutely loved living in that city for a couple of years i love my house there that felt like you know i got to sing i'd wanted to sing on camera for years it's bringing something new to your life. But there are projects that I'm like, you know what, I don't, I don't want to, to leave my family for that. And I'm not willing to sort of like, go to some random town for a month and, um, you know, do something I've done a 100 times before, you know, yeah, just from the content side, for me, I, there, there just seems to be a lot of projects that I'm covering, but I'm not an actor or filmmaker. Do you see the do you see this ex- expansion of content? Does that really help? on the acting level, or it's really, it's a whole different arena for you, for you as far as the quality of content that you're being, you're being offered, et cetera, et cetera. You, you mentioned the scripts and whatnot. Do you see a lot more, or maybe sometimes quantity and qua- quality does not equal each other, right? No, it's interesting. I, everyone says that, and I talk about it all the time with all of my actor friends, like there's so much more content. There's so much more content. But I don't see it as an actress at all. Like I don't, I don't, and neither do any of my friends. So I believe that there is a lot of content, but think about in the last 20 years, how many people are on earth? Like what have we, we've gone up like a billion people in two generations, like 30 years or something. So I think that there, just because there's a lot of content, I think there are just as many thousands of people that move every year to big cities that are trying to be actors. Also, everything is done online now. So you don't even have to move to a big city. You're just making tapes. And also with social media and TikTok, there's just an entire other world of talent that they're getting their, their cast from because uh, some of these smaller movies, smaller projects, they need the built-in audience that a TikToker with 10 million followers is going to give them. So they don't have to pay for PR or whatever that person will post it. So it's just really changed the landscape of it. Whereas when I started 20 years ago, you really needed a really good agent and you could only get that. And it was really hard to get it. And it, there was only one way to like get your foot in the door with these scripts and blah, blah, blah. It's totally changed out now. So I don't see it as like, oh, there's a ton more content and there's a ton more um, possibilities. I think it's just as, um, just as uh, competitive as it ever was, if not more. I also think there's like a lot of talented actors, like a lot of people can act. (laughs) So I think it's, it's, it's just changed a lot. Final couple of questions. Just as a youth, did you get into acting because you were a cinephile or maybe a TV addict, a little bit of both? Which arena, was it film or television, which led you on the acting path or maybe none of the, none of the above? Definitely a cinephile. Like I, we didn't even have cable, so I don't even think I watched any good shows. Um, But my parents are both actors and my mom is in the Academy of Motion Pictures. So she, back then they used to send all the tapes, VCR tapes. Now it's streaming, but back then they used to like send them with gifts and all these like amazing little miniatures and to try to win the vote for the Academy. Of course they outlawed that because then the most wealthy movies would get watched. But we always had every movie in the house. And I remember, you know, my parents are so snobby, like about critiquing everything. And it was like acting in my house was like, our religion like that was basically all anyone ever talked about so I basically I didn't have a chance (laughs) now looking back I'm like god I should have been raised by doctors (laughs) (laughs) thank you so much all right bye-bye this is cinematics